I'm no different than any other Japanese American person here in Los Angeles. Work as an artist, run errands, and I pay my bills, just like everyone else. But sometimes, when the day is done and the opportunity arises, I open my secret little restaurant. It's there I discover who I truly am, one dish at a time. I call that place the Shokudo. Just the chili? Are you gonna do the hot dog, VJCC style, or what? I don't know. I'm thinking of keeping it pure. Are you going with stag? No, we're going for horn, hormel. I was gonna say hornmel. Hormel chili. This is the best stuff. No beans? Chunky beef chili? I mean... Vegetarian it, with beans? Turkey with beans? <laughs> oh, this is a lot of choices. <laughs> a lot of choices. Usually I would go with no beans because this is what my family does. But ever since I became an adult, I learned that chili is supposed to have beans. I don't know. What did you used to have growing up? Um, I used to have... This is mine. I don't even know. What? <laughs> Michael? I think there were beans in there though. Okay, okay, that's fine. Are we here for one can? I think we need a cart. Oh, we're going big tonight. Okay, we got with beans and we got no beans. We're gonna try both and see which one's better. It's gonna go right to my face. Funny how that works. Hi everybody, welcome to the Shokudo. I am here joined with our guests, uh, James and Todd. Come by everybody. Come by. This is bacon tonju. It's very simple. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Mm. Oh, thank you so much. I don't think it's an elephant in there, but I'm Korean, and so like, why do we have a store in Little Tokyo? <laughs> <laughs> she was international marketing hostess for the Mirage Casino, and she entertained a lot of clients in Little Tokyo. That was kind of her exposure to Little Tokyo and was like, dude, they have this Nisei Week Festival every year. It's an amazing community, and so when she wanted to open a bakery, there was this corner spot that had been vacant for a long time in the Japanese village plaza. Mm -hmm. and so she said she's gonna do it, and I said, "Don't do it." I'm like, you just got done be like with cancer. Mm -hmm. It's stressful. You hated running the chocolate store. What do you think makes you think that running a bakery is gonna be more enjoyable? And so I was like, "Great." Uh, and at this point, I actually went back to Ernst Young and I was working there, and I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna quit for a second time <laughs> and figure out how to run uh, this bakery that I have no idea how we're gonna." I mean, 11 years later, you got two locations. You have the Yobo sales. You actually have five. Five? Yeah. Holy mackerel, yeah. really? I only know about the USC one. In there. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so what's, what's your brand? Uh, I usually, I, I like to go fancy. I like the Hebrew National. I like my... <laughs> I like my hot dogs blessed. Uh, <laughs> I don't have Japanese rice. I don't know if that is different or if we need to do that. Because they do have Japanese rice here. What? How do you not have Japanese rice? Because my mom's Chinese and she calls the shots to everything. <laughs> so we have Jasmine. Oh, uh, should we get? I feel like. Okay. We need to get Japanese okay. rice. Okay, sure. Yeah, man, you can't make chili rice with Jasmine rice. That. that <laughs> it's not, well, it's what I grew up with. That's not what we went to Obon festivals for. Asian foods. They lump all the minorities together. Yeah, Asian and Hispanic. Hispanic, kosher, Asian. I know, thanks guys. <laughs> I thought it'd be in the Asian section. Only Asians eat rice, right? Oh, here we go. Come on, eat gold. Okay. And then, oh, here, Kauros. They don't have the good brand though. Yeah, this ain't Tokyo Central, man. Where's the Nishiki? Yeah, where's the big sack of Nishiki? Dang it. Should we get a balancer? A s salad? I don't want to get a salad. That's too much effort. You don't go to Obon to get salad. Yeah, 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 exactly. Three. If you have your club card, please scan it now. Okay, I'm excited. I can't wait to get start cooking. So many things. Like two things. <laughs> oh, day. oh God. Up. Oh, did you get it? I dropped the wieners. Ah, <sighs> mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Now back to the shokudo, so we can cook up some things. 
opening this store was like your mom's. Yeah. 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 That was like her dream, mm -hmm. post you know her second career dream. But like, you know that doesn't didn't necessarily mean that you had to take take it on. And you know now eleven years later from opening Cafe Dulce, you I mean why are you still doing this? <laughs> well, so my mom actually ended up her cancer came back six months after we opened the store, and she lost her battle to ovarian cancer at the second time it came around. She actually. I mean, maybe the story would have been different if she went back for treatment again, but when it came back, she's like, if I'm not going to fix this in natural means, I'm not going to go through chemo again. And stuff mm -hmm. like that. So she decided to do all these other things and it didn't work out. So, you know, that sucks and that's life. Mm -hmm. It took another year, like she fought it for another year. So by the time she passed away, we'd been there for a year and a half. Um, I'm grateful that our first location was in Little Tokyo. Because very early on, I mean, it was dead. I was behind the counter all day by myself in the evenings, no customers. I was there from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. every single day, <laughs> Monday through Sunday. <laughs> the whole week. Monday. Yeah, Monday through Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, every gosh. single day, I have the Veracruz face to prove it. This was in 2011 mm -hmm. when Lil Tokyo was coming out of the the 90s, the late 80s, yeah. yeah, because mm -hmm. after after the LA riots, like, Little Tokyo lost a ton of it. But during those early days when I was there all the time, like, Kristen, Stacy, Jesse, like, they came in, they're like, hey, welcome to Little Tokyo. We're like, we uh, we saw your new business, we wanted to come introduce ourselves, and I was like, that's cool, like, what what do you guys do? They're like, oh, we work in the neighborhood, but we also started a nonprofit called LT Roots. Mm. She goes, our goal is to bring as many people to Little Tokyo as possible. And as a business owner, going like, dude, yeah, we need more people in the community <laughs> yeah. because it increases our chances of surviving as, right. as a business. Yeah. And so I was like, dude, how can I help? You know, like, there's no one sitting outside anyways. Like, go ahead, like, make us look busy. Like, do you need leftover pastries? Do you need coffee? Whatever you need to host, whatever. And that was like my first exposure to really the JA community in Little Tokyo. And then I think it's an interesting that happens like when you say yes, and then they ask you something else and you say yes and you get involved and they're like, oh, James is always down, so let's include him in more things. Mm -hmm. And then you say yes and yes and you get really ingrained in that community. I think the cool thing was after a couple of years and even after my mom passed and whatever else, like I started seeing the impact that we could have as a cafe and a community. And that was more fulfilling than working in a corporate office. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would have had nearly the same impact in, in my immediate community and like people that I know and care about if I was at a company working as an auditor or whatever, you know? So mm -hmm. that quickly became like very fulfilling. Dude, like it's it's so fun. Like, like I meet Todd and getting to experience stuff like this. Like this wouldn't happen if I was an accountant. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. last, last person you want to talk to is an accountant. Right? <laughs> or would have, but it would have been way shadier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, so what we have here is chili rice. Uh, this one is as simple as two ingredients. It's chili and rice <laughs> straight out of the can. There is no other. It has to be Hormel. This is just, it's the best brand ever. No beans. <laughs> uh, no beans, that's very important. I just had it all the time and I didn't know why I was eating or what I was eating. I just knew that this existed in my life uh -huh. and it was quick and easy and I just ate this. I mean, yeah. Do you do you know like the you know why this is the, this is the dish? I don't know. I always thought it was like a Hawaiian thing. Yeah, it is Hawaiian. Like... I I don't know the exact origins of how we've all seemed to settle on this mm. particular brand and subtype of, mm -hmm. of chili. Mm -hmm. And there was a restaurant in Hawaii called Zippies, mm -hmm. and they I, I I don't know if they started it, but it was one of the more popular chili making restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, and I and if you look on like Google search or something, there's there's a lot of people trying to like replicate that Zippy's mm. chili. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I could see uh, eating this often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. This has been a staple at like Gardena Valley JCI has their mm -hmm. Dermatsity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm sure you have something out here in Venice. Do they, do they serve chili rice at that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When you eat a bowl of chili rice, you're like, Ah, oh, yeah, this is good. I remember this. This is this is my childhood. 
So my wife too, because she's just like, what's so special about this? And I'm like, everything. She's like, can, <laughs> can you explain? No, I can't explain, but this is really special to me. It's all those Obon staples, like chili rice or um, teriyaki chicken. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. There's always stuff. a yakisoba. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I've just been here, and I, that's Obon for me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know until I was like, probably in high school. I was like, there's multiple obons everywhere. And they're like, yeah, it's not just there, man. I'm like, oh, okay. Man, there, yeah, there's... before the pandemic, there's a whole obon circuit, man. Like they would oh. post where and yeah. when. Some people Holy would like travel up and down the coast. Just going to all of them? Just going to all of them, yeah. That's cool. How many have you been to in a year? In a year, maybe like six. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's you guys still eat it? Like, is it still a staple in your kitchen? I mean, certainly, like Luke's, I, my mom made it the other day. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. See, so growing up, we didn't really eat that much of this kind of chili because my mom always used to make chili like at home, uh -huh. oh, wow. but she used beans. Blasphemy! So. <laughs> 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 no, I know. I grew up in the community, but then you know once I finished high school and stuff like that, I went to uh, school in Long Beach, so mm -hmm. I wasn't around as much anymore. Once I got out and I, I came back, then um, you know, I was trying to figure out ways to volunteer and participate and stuff like that. So actually, my buddy, oh, Randy, uh -huh. got me into some of the planning and participating in Nisei Week. And then, you know, once you start saying yes once, <laughs> they keep asking you. And, um, you know, eventually I joined the board. It's been about six, seven years now mm -hmm. that, that I've been pretty heavily involved. And this time, we are going to use Hormel chili with beans. This is how I'm making rice. Sometimes you're lazy, okay? So I'm making Insta rice, okay? So let's get this in the microwave and let's see what we get. This is so delicious. Mmm. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It tastes my childhood. But what are some of the most crucial things for, for an EC week as a going concern? That's kind of a weird thing, because it's hard. It's oddly hard to get in as a volunteer. It's hard to like just say, oh, I'm gonna go volunteer without knowing how to get connected to the people that like right. Organize, uh, organize the volunteers. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's weird because at the same time, we're like, oh, you want to, like... You're dying you, yeah, for volunteers. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. You also have people that want to volunteer. You're like, dude, it's more work. <laughs> Explaining <laughs> stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. The, the difficulty with some of that <laughs> is people that you don't know handling money. Yeah, for sure. Because oh, <laughs> you yeah. have to have yeah, people that are available but also that you're familiar enough with to trust them with money. You know, so far we haven't run into any problems. The, the people that have been volunteering with us are, they're great. A lot of them come back for multiple years, so. So yeah, when, when like, when you talk about like Nisei, which happened for 80? Yeah. We technically had our 80th this past year. Right. So we missed, you know, a couple during the war. Uh -huh. We missed a couple for COVID. Uh -huh. So the math doesn't quite add up, but it's, it's 80, 80 years. But yeah, when you but when you talk about an event that's happened over 80 times and it's on an yeah. annual basis, that's like an amazing thing. Yeah. And like, if people don't grasp that, like, I, I, that doesn't make sense to me. Mm. And that why that wouldn't be significant to somebody. Yeah, I mean, if something lasts that long, that means it wasn't just one person keeping it alive. Course, he had yeah. to, or some whoever had to teach someone else, and they had to embrace that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the longest running cultural festival. Wow. Yeah. Keep it going, man. I'll, I'll do what I can. Yeah. <laughs> it's all on you, Ty. Yeah. Don't screw it up, Ty. <laughs> it's all being recorded right now. Yeah. Let's do this.
the last leg of the meal. What are we making? Here? Else? So we're gonna make andagi. Okinawan andagi. Yeah, Okinawan andagi. <laughs> Which is funny because this whole time it's called dango, right? People call it dango in the VJC, like the festivals and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. What, what makes it Okinawan? The style. So if you go to like mainland Japan, uh -huh. dango is actually a very different dish. It's not deep fried like this. This is like kind of like a donut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, dango in like mainland Japan is these like almost like mochi, kind yeah, of like it's white the drizzle, yeah, uh -huh. on top. Yeah. This stems from the same roots as dango, but it's a completely different. Thing. I guess so. <laughs> I don't know who started calling the only down one, one dango. Uh, oh, <laughs> so okay, stupid so JA people. Yeah. He's <laughs> <laughs> not knowing our own culture. Like nobody's gonna know. Everybody's still in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? They were right. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Shall we start the first couple ones? Yes, yeah. All right. Show us how it's done. Okay. So from what I've seen, what I practiced yesterday, just yesterday, you don't want to make them too big. That's what I did last time. You want to be able to put it in your hand. And you want to be able to squeeze, and then you want to chop it off. So I'm going to attempt to do it. Again, not a professional, so let's see. Let's see how this goes. Dude, fried dough, how can you go wrong with this? It smells so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, this what are you good. looking for when it's done? Floating? Floating, and what happens is, is that it starts to crack. And that's oh, what geez. that's what I look for. When it starts to crack, and then it'll flip over, like right. it'll tell you it's done. Look, 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 I see it, I see it. Whoa! That was so cool. It's, it's dark. <laughs> I think a huge part of it, or preserving it, is, is is having Little Tokyo be what it is. Having that physical space that we can go there and be transported <coughs> back or be reminded because of that physical space. Like without it, yeah, it, it, it'd be really hard to get everyone to gather in one place. Like up in San Francisco area, I, I think it's thinned out quite a bit still. Like, oh, you're yeah. talking about like post-COVID? Yeah, I mean, no, it's, it's been just, just in general. Yeah, yeah, it's in Japan town's not the same. Well, they got cut in half because a Deary Street got, you know, kind of split their Japan town. Oh, I see. And then yeah, the yeah, other yeah. side just completely. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. So now they have like half as large as what they used to be. Yeah. Little Tokyo is very unique and very. I to also in saying that, like, I mean, very special, in the sense that like people are there and they. It really feels like a, a neighborhood. Yeah. Dude, we don't have anything like that. In, Korea time, you know? Every, everyone's there, you know, there's a bunch of restaurants and stuff, and, but there's no like central hub of like JCCC, Japanese Village, Jiana, you know? The the history in Little Tokyo is like pretty deep, and I'm very lucky to have been like welcomed into that. Um, and I don't know, I've, I've heard things where like some older generation people are like, oh, James is Korean or whatever else, but <laughs> other people have. have so the ones that were in the war. <laughs> 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 But on the same note, like there's been many people still like older generation um, JAs that are like, no, James is amazing. We need more people that are invested in the community just like that. I mean, yeah, I would agree things. with all of this because I mean, the names that I hear are like, you know, Brian Tito from Vietzudo, Roy at the Japan yeah. and you know, yeah. you. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you guys are the guys that are like keeping Little Tokyo what it is. And, no, I mean, it's, there's definitely, it's not just, you know, there's a ton of people like Todd, obviously, and, and everyone that's, you guys too now, who are coming in and helping with Nisi Week and stuff, mm -hmm. like it's, it takes, it really takes a village, you know, as, as somebody that, you know, had, it, kind of an outsider it, on the inside, like, I don't see this in a lot of other communities. Mm -hmm. uh, there probably is out there, but dude, Little Tokyo for sure is special. Mm -hmm. We used to always do this for Obon. This? But like this? We use a... Um, Ice cream scoop? Melon yeah. ballers. Oh, melon oh, yeah. ballers. Yeah, melon ballers. But my <laughs> uncle... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kablamo. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. But my uncle found a donut hole 
thing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You, put, you pour the battery the in and then you yeah yeah yeah. So you guys do that. So yeah. Oh, and uh, you gotta yeah because yeah, you can crank them out. Huh? Yeah. So oh. yeah, they're they're doing like a couple hundred at a time. <laughs> Crazy. Wow. Going to these Obon festivals and seeing people that you haven't seen for maybe like five to ten years and being like, John, is that you? And you're like, oh, hi. <laughs> I don't know your name. It's me. Remember me? Uh, we went to elementary school. Remember the rope thing? I'm like, the rope? Yeah, too. Yeah, nice. Yeah. And then, yeah, like I've had that my whole life in every single Obon festival. But in that, it's very special because like, you know, like I come back here and then that's where you gather and that's where you meet all these people you've never met. They all go to Obon at one time. We've lost a lot of that sense of coming out to things or like volunteering at Obon's and Matsuri's and stuff because people are used to now being at home, doing, doing their own things, things doing things virtually. You know, I'm just, yeah, do you have any insight on like, you know? You gotta dust off all your old phone trees. Yeah. <laughs> just start calling people. Yeah, be like getting people to volunteer and then and then also coming out to the event itself. I mean, if, like all the conspiracy rabbit holes out there, right? Like that you can fall into. One of them is about dismantling communities. Oh, like you know, why was it? Like, it was supposed to be two weeks to s slow the spread, and it took two years, and like everyone was just mm. locked down and isolated. Mm. And you know, like believe whatever theory you want, but like the for sure thing that it did is exactly what you talked about. Is is um, it's made people used to not seeing other people, mm -hmm. right? thinking that it's okay not to. Whereas like like it happened act actually, it happens here, right at the dinner table. When you're eating together and breaking bread and yeah. doing life, like yeah. that's when tradition gets passed on. I think that's what community is. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean during the pandemic, if you were eating with someone, you felt safe enough with them that you're like, okay, we're not gonna right. kill each other over yeah. this meal. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> or I'm lonely enough to uh, <laughs> risk my life. <laughs> <Don't> talk, <bro. laughs> that's the thing about them, though. They're supposed to be. Funky looking because it that's how you get the like crispy bits. Yeah, Ooh, the crispy yeah. bits are the best part. <laughs> it's the beating heart of the JA people. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that. I was thinking, I was like, that's not a nice thing to say. Oh, that one cracked. Which one? Ooh, that one. That, oh, that's the crack you're looking for. Yes, that's exactly. The crack Look at this crack. This is oh, crack. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Either way is beautiful. Love crack. Yeah. <laughs> How you're talking about how like you're trying to figure out ways to get back into the communities mm -hmm. is that something that's pretty um is that ingrained in your guys' culture to to do that or i mean because yeah, yeah i i mean going back to the korea town thing like i don't hear any korean americans going like oh i wanted to figure out how to give back to the korean american community like yeah a large part of like these old bone things and the matsuris was that if you were in the kendo club or the judo club at a community center, then they made you work in that booth for their summer festival. Right. And then the, uh, in that way, yeah. Force. Force yeah. volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> in one hand, it's just like, yeah, get them in the booth, get them working, mm. and then maybe they'll talk to, the, or they'll see people that they know. But then later down the line, they'll be like, oh, I did this, you know, when I was younger. Mm. And it kind of like, incepts their mind, and they're like, oh, I need to <laughs> get back a little bit, or uh, I need to do that. I don't know if you experienced this, you know, maybe when you went to Asia or like when you went off to college, but my friend, she, you know, kind of grew up doing these events, going to these events and stuff, and then she went to Japan for five years, and then when she came back, she kind of noticed, like, oh, things are kind of the same, and like, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter what I do, the world kind of just rotates. Yes, really yeah. Uh -huh. And I was like, well, that's because, I mean, you can you can have that attitude and not participate because yeah. you know that it'll still be there, but then there are people, you know, like us here who help the world turn, right. mm -hmm. keeps it going. And like, you know, how do you, how do you want to be? Do you want to just be someone who's on, on the ride or yeah. do you want to help it keep going? And like, that's, how, that's the perspective yeah. I had when I was trying to come back. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> I knew you know, there there was always that need for volunteers and stuff like that. And the more you volunteer, the more you see that need like growing and growing because 
you know, people age out or mm -hmm. people go start families or whatever. They're not available as much. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting around like, well, if I don't do it, like who's gonna do it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Show me the way. Show oh, me yeah. the way. Well, cheers. You wanna put it up there? Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Well, it's good. Mike, do you, you join us? Uh, all right, yeah, I'll join it. Yeah. Oh, what do you think? It's that's okay? So good. This is okay. Okay, thank goodness. Oh. This is actually like exactly what I imagined. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. um, that's sweet dough. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Put these in here. Nice. That was awesome. I'll start with the other I, one. I was expecting it to be watching. Oh, really? No, I was going to have a big one. <laughs> I'm disappointed that uh, it wasn't much. How about your silver one? Oh, we're just grabbing it? Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Wait, we have to lock Dude. arms. Right. Lock arms. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the YouTube oh, no, thumbnail. You <laughs> that is the YouTube thumbnail. That was good. Yeah. 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 Do this again. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you guys came here and uh, you guys can leave here full and everything. Yeah. Dude. Well, thank you guys for coming out. I hope you enjoyed Chili Rice and Okinawan Andangi, as we now we now know that it's properly called. Mm -hmm. Um. Dude. Yeah, just having great conversations about, you know, having business in Little Tokyo, organizing events in Little Tokyo. And I hope we can collectively keep all of these things going, keeping mm -hmm. the traditions alive, because they're so important. And I think us talking here tonight really demonstrated why that is. Yeah, sure. Thank you for having us. And the food so was much. awesome. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. That's that's high praise. I, I, I really appreciate that. Sponsored by Honda. Yeah. <laughs> Hormel sponsor us. Yeah. 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 There's right Hormel. <laughs> <laughs>